Hi, I'm Jennifer, one of the Latin America sales managers here at Global Electronic Services. You may remember me from the Chili Dog Eating Contest because I won. Our customers are always asking how we test their FANUC equipment. So today I rounded up John and Erwin, our FANUC specialists. So let's go back here and quiz these guys. Safety first. All right, now it took me a second to round them up, but these are our FANUC specialists that are gonna help us out. This is Erwin and this is John. Now, John, one of the main questions that I have for you, is it called FANUC or FANUC? In the United States, it's commonly referred to as FANUC. FANUC is an acronym, which stands for Fujitsu Automatic Numerical Controls. Like the United States, Japan has different dialects between Northern and Southern Japan. Many people in Japan will refer to it as FANUC. In the U.S., it will be referred to as FANUC. I'm gonna call it FANUC. No, I'm gonna call it FANUC. <laughs> Now, do we only have the ability to test the Alpha series drives? Jennifer, with the 16 series control and 150 series control, we can test any of the Alpha series drives. And with our other test stations, we have the ability to test the Beta series as well as the older S series drives. Now, Erwin, what is the proper way to test a motor for a short? The proper way to test a motor is to first lock out the machine, remove the cable from the drive, and test all three motor phases to ground with a mega ohm meter. This way you will test both the motor and the cable for problems. Now John, I have a customer of mine that's trying to communicate with his machine using an RS-232 port and he keeps getting errors. There are several things that can cause these errors. The RS-232 port is a high fail item on the machine tool. It's very susceptible to electrical surges. However, one of the most common fail items is the cable. You need to make sure that you're using a known good cable when communicating. Otherwise, when you attempt to either read in or punch out a cable, a signal, you'll get a 086 alarm that's going to indicate that either the cable is incorrect or the port has failed. Take a known good cable, insert it into the RS-232 port. Set your machine up to receive a file. In this case, we will read in a file the screen will begin to flash read. You will now transmit your file into the machine tool. If the screen continues to flash read or on the more modern controls LSK but never receives the file, you either have a break in your cable or more than likely a defective COM port on either the memory board or master board. These will need to be sent in for repair. Now John, one of the questions that I hear a lot is why does the spindle come to a slow stop? Spindle drives make use of what's known as a regeneration circuit. The back EMF of the motor is regenerated back into the incoming power supply. This brings the motor to a controlled stop. If there is a failure in the regeneration circuit, the spindle will coast to a stop. This problem is usually indicated on the spindle drive as a failure in the regeneration circuit. However, regeneration is the responsibility of the power supply unit. So look to the power supply as the cause of this problem. Now another question is, what is an access communications error? An access communication error indicates a communications problem between the motor encoder and the CNC control. This can be caused by the motor encoder itself, the cable going to the encoder, or the access control card that is plugged into. Okay, now John, what is an excess error alarm and what causes it? Excess errors can be caused by a variety of problems. An excess error means that the machine has moved beyond its allowable tolerance. The CNC has told the servo drive to make a move. The servo drive moves the motor, which in turn moves the encoder or scale. There's no such thing as a perfect machine. As the machine is moving, it's going to have some deviation. This deviation is known as the excess. Parameters are configured in the machine that tell the machine how much deviation you're allowed to have. While stopped, you'll have a very small amount of deviation. While moving, you'll have a larger amount of deviation. Deviation errors can be caused by a variety of things. A dull tool can cause the axis to be pushed out of position, resulting in a deviation error. Excessive chip buildup underneath the way covers can cause the machine axis to be pushed out of position. This will cause a deviation error while stopped. Servo drives failing can also cause a deviation error. Now, a lot of times my customers ask me about specific alarms. For instance, the 401. The 401 alarm is a very generic alarm 
It simply means that the servos did not obey. The CNC, who is in charge of the servos, tells the servo drive to turn on and stay on. If for any reason the servo drive turns itself off without permission from the CNC, the CNC will generate a 401 alarm. This alarm will typically occur with other alarms, such as the 414 alarm. Now that was my next question. What does that alarm mean? The 414 alarm is an alarm issued by the CNC that says a problem has been found in either the servo drive or feedback system. The 414 alarm will show which axis is causing the problem. To identify the specifics of this alarm, you will go into the CNC diagnostics page. Diagnostic number 200 on the 16 control will indicate what is causing the problem. In this particular case, diagnostic 200 x-axis shows a low voltage alarm occurring. This would indicate a failure on the servo drive system or power supply. It could also indicate a failure with the three-phase power coming into the servo drive. In this series of alarms, we have a 400, 401, and 414. The 401 alarm indicates a generic alarm that says something has occurred in the servo system. The 414 says that we can go to the diagnostic 200 to see the specifics. The 400 indicates that an overload has occurred. This indicates an over temperature in either the servo drive or the motor itself. When we access diagnostic 200, it will show that there is a low voltage and an overload that is occurring in the x-axis. Diagnostic 201, bit zero, specifies whether or not this is a problem in the servo drive or the motor. Now John, I have an easy one for you. How do you identify a FANUC part number? Actually, it's very simple. All FANUC part numbers will start with the letter A, followed by a two-digit number and a second letter. The dash, in this case, A06B, dash 6089 identifies the drive. H104 will indicate the version of the drive. These are servo amplifier modules. A06B, 6079, H201. The 201 indicates that it is a dual axis servo amplifier. The two refers to two axis capability. If it was an H101, it would be a single axis, H301, a triple axis. This is a FANUC model Alpha 3 3000 motor. Part number A06B0123 B575 pound sign 7008. All FANUC motors will start with A06B. The middle number indicates the motor ID type 0123. The last numbers B575 indicate the type of encoder that is used inside the motor. The pound sign 7000 number will indicate the type of shaft that is used on the motor. This, these can be tapered shafts, tapered shafts with keys, or straight shafts. Now you know how to identify your FANUC part number. Now John, how do I know an I.O. card is bad? I.O. cards come in a variety of different types. For instance, this is an I.O. card used to interface the operator panel to the CNC. These modules are typically used by machine tool builders as input and output modules. The input module has LEDs that will indicate if a signal is currently being applied to it. To make sure that the information is getting from this module to the PMC, you can look at the PMC diagnostics display screen. The diagnostic screen for that particular address will change from a 0 to a 1 to indicate that the PMC is seeing the change in the limit switch. Now John, I know this is a fault code. What does the 24 mean? Typically, if you have a fault code on the display, there's a problem with the drive. In this case, the 24 indicated that the control was in the process of booting up. The parameters had not been loaded into the spindle drive yet. As you see, it's now changed to an emergency stop state. This means that the parameters have been loaded from the CNC control into the spindle drive. The rest of the spindle drives, everything on here, including the servos, are all showing an emergency stop condition until we tell them to come out of the emergency stop state. Once they come out of the emergency stop state, they'll all change to zeros except for the spindle drive. The spindle drive will continue to show emergency stop until it's been given a move command, either forward or reverse command. Any numbers other than these indicated on here will indicate that that particular device has detected an error. Now, Erwin, I have a question for you. How can I tell the difference between a DC and AC servo motor? 
Well, on Fanuc motors, the encoders covers will be red on AC motors and they will be yellow or black on the DC motors. That's good to know. Now, John, I have another troubleshooting question for you. My customer has an access motor moving in the wrong direction. Why is that? A common misconception is that the motor is wired improperly. This isn't true. In a digital AC servo system, the CNC creates the waveform. The encoder on the motor monitors the direction that the motor is turning in. The only way that you can reverse phase a motor is to change the parameter setting. This parameter will tell the CNC whether a positive move is in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction from the motor perspective. Another possibility to be able to change the motor direction is a mistake hep that is called mirror image. Mirror image will reverse the programmed move direction. Now I'm curious, I've been told about high current alarms and over current alarms. What's the difference? The difference primarily is in the current monitoring. If you were to receive a 414 alarm and went to the 200 diagnostics to determine what the cause of the alarm is, sometimes you'll indicate a high current or an overcurrent. A high current is more accurately described as an abnormal current. The servo drive monitors the quality of the current passing through it. If it sees noise inside of the system, it will generate a high current alarm and shut the machine down. An overcurrent alarm indicates that too much current has flowed through the DC link and usually caused by a short in the system. High current alarms can be caused by a defective servo drive or more commonly coolant contamination inside of the motor windings or cable. Inspect your cables carefully. Overcurrent alarms are typically caused by an unplanned contact, defective transistor module, or dull tooling trying to make a cut. All right, John, now I have a customer that changed out his motor, but he keeps getting a soft over travel alarm when he tries to reference. Why this, is that? This is a very common problem whenever changing out a motor. When the CNC powers down, it remembers its last known position. When you restart the machine, an incremental encoder will ask that the machine be repositioned. When you try to do a re-reference of the machine tool, it doesn't agree with where the last known position was. The machine will automatically go into a default, indicating a soft over-travel alarm. These alarms can occur at any point in the travel of the machine. To get around this alarm, it's a very simple procedure. Power the machine down, hold down the key with the letter P on it, and the cancel button. Power the machine up while you continue to hold these keys down. At this point, the machine will ignore all soft over-travels until the first zero reference position has been done on that axis. This will clear the soft over-travel alarms. That's a useful tip. Now, John, I have a different customer that he unplugged his motor. Now he's getting a 300 APC alarm. What does that mean? A 300 APC alarm indicates that the customer is using an absolute pulse coder. The difference between an absolute pulse coder and an incremental pulse coder deals in the memory retention of the position. On a CNC control with an incremental pulse coder, you must reference the machine every time you turn the machine back on. Whereas an absolute pulse coder has a battery-backed memory. This battery-backed memory retains the position of the machine tool when it powers down. When the CNC control wakes up, it asks the encoder, where are you? The encoder then responds back with its current position. If it's within tolerance of where it was when it shut down, the CNC is happy and will continue to run the program. If, however, you lose the memory retention due to an encoder cable being unplugged, then you will end up with the 300 level alarms. These alarms are simply saying that the machine must be re-referenced. The referencing procedure will be determined by the machine tool builder. Consult your machine tool builder manual for the proper operation. Thank you, John. Now, Erwin, what is a separate detection unit? A separate detection unit is something that isn't attached to the motor. It could be an encoder or a scale or any other device that isn't attached to the motor. Okay. Now, why would you want to use a separate detection unit? Accuracy. If a motor is using the, a built-in encoder, then what you're actually measuring is the true position of the motor itself. However, with a scale attached to the machine, you're measuring the true mechanical motion of the table as opposed to just the motor motion. Now, I got a pretty weird one for you. Often I hear customers saying that they, their axes are making growling and whooping sounds. What could cause this? What do these sounds sound like? 
One of them sounds like whoop, whoo, and the other one's more like grrr. The growling sound is most likely going to be a thrust bearing as opposed to an electrical problem. As it begins to wear, it will make a growling noise, especially prevalent when the axis is in rapid motion. The whooping noise that you're referring to indicates a defective ball screw. As the ball screw begins to wear, it will make the whooping sound. You'll notice this primarily in rapid motion. The same customer experiencing the growling is also experiencing accuracy problems. Can they be related? Yes. If the customer is hearing growling noises come out of his machine, there's a high probability that the thrust bearings are damaged. In this case, when the machine reverses direction, they will experience lost motion. This will only show up on a machine tool using a semi-closed loop system, meaning you're running strictly off of the motor encoder. This problem typically will not show up with a machine running scales. All right, John, I have a customer that reported noise in the spindle. They rebuilt their gearbox, but they're still getting the noise. Erwin, any ideas? Uh, yeah, usually there is a gear on the back of the motor and it has a Hall effect sensor that senses the speed and that is going bad and it'll sound like your motor is full of rocks. Wow, it's good to know. I have another customer that got a machine repaired and his axis won't move and there are no alarms. This could be caused by several problems. Possibility, the feed rate override switch could be turned to zero or the rapid override switch could be turned to zero. The most likely cause though, put the machine in jog mode, select your axis, and as you see, nothing is moving. There are no alarm messages displayed on the screen. The servo drives are showing that they are online by indicating a zero. The next likely possibility is an axis interlock. The axis interlock will show up as address G8, bit number zero. This bit must be a one, it must be high in order for normal machine operation to occur. Unless this bit is high, the axis will not move and it will not generate an alarm message. This bit is set high in the ladder logic by the machine tool builder. If the bit is low, the axis will not move and the machine does not have to generate an alarm message. It will show normal operation. Consult with the machine tool builder to find out the reason that G8 bit zero is low. That's great, John. Here's another possibility. If the machine is in automatic or memory mode and is executing a program and has come to a stop, the cycle start light is on, the program is no longer executing, it's come to a stop. You can access the CNC diagnostics page. The first line on the page will indicate why the machine has come to a stop. In this particular case, it shows that a motion command is currently being made. It will not be able to clear to a zero until the move has been completed. The next one down indicates that feed rate override is set to zero. The switch is now set to zero. As I turn that back up, my program is once again executing. Here's another possibility. You go to lunch, you come back to your machine tool, everything had been running fine, you place the machine in memory mode and you hit the cycle start button. The machine starts to run but then it just comes to a stop. No more motion, no alarms, everything looks fine. Where do you start looking for this problem? You push the system button and look at the CNC diagnostic screen. If there is a one in the right hand column, this tells you why the machine has not completed the move. In this particular case, the one indicates it's making a motion command. True, we gave it a move command. It's attempting to execute this move. The next one we come down here, look across, it says feed rate override at zero. The feed rate override switch has been set to zero. Turn it back up. Your program is now running back the way it should. Now Erwin, I have a customer whose display isn't working, but his controls are still powering up. How could he troubleshoot this? If their machine is still operating normally, they most likely have a problem with their CRT or the CRT power supply. In either case, they will need to send the unit in for repair. Great, I'll let them know. All right, John, Erwin, thank you guys so much for all your help. And Erwin, can I see these things run? Yeah. Yes. Now you know how we test your Fanic equipment. 
If you have Bannock equipment that you need repaired, put it in a box and ship it. Yeah. yeah.